Got a chance to talk to Brian Mason. Brian Mason's the new special teams coordinator for the Colts. And the unique property in him is that he's an Indianapolis native. He grew up in Zionsville. He played football at Zionsville. He graduated in 2005. He idolized the Colts growing up, and now he gets to work for him. He was a special teams coordinator with Cincinnati, Notre Dame, and he's coming here to raise some hell and get this thing right and get this thing dynamic. The return game, the block game, all of that has to be on point. He was asked about the new kicker. He can't talk about the new kicker because no signing becomes official before tomorrow at 4 o'clock. That's Wednesday at 4 o'clock when free agency starts, depending on when you watch this. So uh, special teams are going to have to be dynamic for the Colts because, like I said, coming off 4-12-1, and one, it's going to take all hands on deck. you got to play good football no matter where you are on this team to affect this team positively. I'm Brian Mason, uh, really blessed and fortunate to be the special teams coordinator for the Indianapolis Colts. I'm originally from and born and raised in the Indianapolis area. My wife, Rachel Stark Mason, was born and raised in the Indianapolis area. We're really, really excited for this opportunity. Really thankful for, to uh, Jim Ursay and the Ursay family, Chris Ballard and Shane Steichen, and uh, we can't wait to start moving forward and, and hit the ground running. So, open it up to any questions that you guys have. Was it always a goal to get to the NFL? Did you just like, what, when did it happen? So I started off coaching Division Three football. So I played Division Three football, started coaching Division Three football. I did not have a goal that I was going to coach at Notre Dame or coach for the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, I grew up, you know, a huge Indianapolis Colts fan, as as most people that grew up in the Indianapolis area. And, and certainly, it would have been a dream to be able to work for this amazing franchise and be able to live in Indianapolis and, and work for the Colts. Uh, but certainly, I didn't have like, here's my dreams or goals starting off, you know, coaching small college football. I just worked hard. And, Took advantage of every, every opportunity that I had. So, what year did you graduate from Zionville? 2005. So, right when this was going, right? So, you, huge Colts fan, you said. Yeah. And, and all those Absolutely. So, what was you? What was what was pushed you into the game? Was it was it playing, or was it always an end to be a coach? Yeah, you know, I think I've had some really great coaching role models in my life. So even starting with my high school football coach, Larry McWhorter, you know, really had a great impact on my life that pushed me to want to play college football, even at the Division three level. Had a lot of injury issues both in high school and college that kind of pushed me into being a student coach. And just really, as a student coach in college, really started to love it. Like, you know what, let, let me pursue this and see where it goes. So um, how much time have you had to familiar familiarize yourself with, you know, what you had to work with there and what, what are your first impressions? Yeah, so over the last week, you know, been, you know, working with um, assistant special teams coach Joe Hastings and, and really going through the roster, a lot of things that, you know, obviously we've done here um, as an organization and on special teams the last couple of years to try and be able to familiarize myself with the roster and who we have coming back and, and all the different things that we're looking to, to implement, but it's really just been full steam ahead over the last week. Brian, just to talk about the elephant in the room. You guys have got a kicker who said he's looking forward to being an Indianapolis Colt. Can you comment out about that game? No, I can't make any comments about personnel or, or any uh, potential situations as obviously Matt talked to you guys about. How much of this helped Dallas Berry after the So obviously it makes the special teams coach a lot better if you have really consistent, dependable specialists at all three positions, and certainly that would be very exciting. What's um, Shane said the interviews for the position coaches were grueling. I'm just curious, what was your interview like with him? And what were your thoughts going into it? And, and afterward, did you think like you nailed it? Did you think you had the job? No, certainly, um, you know, it was, it was a really good experience, um, you know, to be able to come in and, and do something that's different. Certainly, I'd never interviewed with an NFL franchise before. Didn't know exactly what to expect on a lot of different levels. Was really impressed with him and Chris Ballard and just who they are as people. Um, and, and how sharp they were, how well spoken they were, the vision, the plan they had, how important they put, uh, the importance they put on special teams really felt, you know, coming out of that interview in and talking with them further that, you know, what special teams are going to continue to be successful here based on their vision and the importance they put on it, which I was really impressed with. Um, you know, really just came in like a normal coaching interview for the most part and, and presented for several hours, answered questions, get to know each other, those kinds of things, and go in depth about some scheme and different ideas and things. Uh, but it was a good experience. Did not by any means think, you know, I, I was going to get the opportunity right after. Yeah, I think you guys, uh, if I recall, first of all, a ton of kicks at Notre Dame last year. Uh, I have a history of that. Um, does that say anything about your philosophy? Were you guys really aggressive? And, and just, you know, what does that have to do with maybe your 
view of, of kicking games? Yeah, as a whole, special teams mentality-wise, um, I've always tried to be aggressive, tough, and disciplined in everything we do. Um, certainly, we want to be aggressive but smart. We're not going to be reckless, but we want to be able to try to find different advantages we can to have some fun in the game and create explosive plays that can impact field position. Those are really the two top things we're looking to impact every single game. Number one is field position. Number two is to generate explosive plays and limit the explosive plays of our opponent. We're able to you know, have some success at that at Cincinnati and Notre Dame. Um, you know, being able to block kicks and punts, I think, um, you know, three of the last four years, we were number one in the country at block kicks and punts. And a lot of that, you know, is, is the head coach, it starts with the head coach and buy-in to be able to give you, um, you know, players that can compete at a really high level and make plays and do those things. The players being bought into the culture and things that we had going on and being able to take advantage of some situations and opportunities and games to make some of those plays. Uh, the mentality of being aggressive certainly helps, you know, as you start to build things to, to get those opportunities. I know, a related note, I mean, it, it takes certain kinds of players to do that. Um, I mean, I know your predecessor had a lot of influence on roster and at least a voice in it. Um, have you had any conversations about that with Chris Ballard and, and Shane? And just, do you think that would be something you'll be able to kind of at least um, impact a little bit? Yeah, certainly, you know, in the interview process and some follow-up after that, you know, there's been open dialogue that, you know, hey, coaches evaluations um, are important and we're certainly going to have some dialogue, you know, obviously personnel decisions will go through Chris and all those different things, but certainly there'll be some open conversations with those evaluations and things. Brian, you mentioned when you interviewed, you didn't have um, kind of a dream situation, you didn't necessarily think you would get it. Why, I guess, why did you get it? Did you just want experience? Did you think, hey, you never know, you know hometown team, this is sort of opportunity to grow on trees? What yeah, it was really just it was an opportunity that was too good to pass up to be able to be in Indianapolis, you know, opportunity to pursue something in the NFL, to learn more about it, to meet Shane Steichen and Chris Ballard, um, to get that kind of experience. You know, I was more and more impressed by them. You know, as I interviewed with them, got to know more information about them afterwards, um, and just you know, being able to work for a team that you kind of grew up idolizing growing up and, and taking the next step in my coaching career. Brian, have you kept, kept Zionville as a base or have you had to move around with your jobs? We moved around, yeah, moved around a lot. So very fortunate, very thankful my wife has, has handled a lot of those things. Even though we had some continuity, maybe in college we did end up moving a lot from house to house and some different things. She worked for the NCAA headquarters for about seven years, so we actually split the difference. Um, she drove to Indianapolis and I drove to work in Cincinnati, so we kind of moved around some with that. So in the last six years we've lived together, this will be our fifth move, so I'm very thankful for her. Uh, and so you know, know, you know the real estate? I did not. So you know the real estate layout back in Zion Fillery, if that's where you're going to be? <laughs> not a lot of real estate available, but we'll work with <laughs> do you. Want me, do you want me like super close to your parents or a little bit of space? <laughs> that's a good question. Have you crossed paths with Chris Bauer at all, like pro days or anything like that? I have not. A lot of guys can be on special teams, but what goes into like making a core special team? What traits do you identify those guys who are seem to be on each unit, basically? Yeah, obviously that's position specific. Um, we're certainly looking for guys that, you know, number one, love the game of football, have passion, high effort, and attitude. Um, we're going to be tough, physical at the point of attack, have speed, straight line speed, different you know characteristics. It's going to be different between skill guys, big skill guys, and some of those different things. But we're looking for guys that you know can make adjustments, have a high football IQ, play with passion, high effort, and energy, have straight line speed, and physical at the point of attack. How did you get that, that buy-in from, from guys, especially young guys who maybe were stars in college and they didn't have to play on, on teams that much? Uh, what What is kind of the method for getting them to buy into it? And, and you know, understanding can affect the future. Absolutely. You know, there's a lot of different ways to the culture of special teams and both intrinsic and ex extrinsic motivation factors that we've used over the years um, that I'll continue to use here. That And there's different things that they've done here in the past. But certainly we're trying to get guys that have selfless sacrifice to, to give in to special teams when maybe a lot of them came here for offense and defense didn't think they'd have a role on special teams. So there's a lot of different ways we can show them how it's going to impact this team, how it's going to impact the game. So we start off by saying, here's the different ways that hey, we're going to impact field position, we're going to generate explosive plays. It's going to help us win football games. You know, Obviously, that's going to get people interested. We're going to show them how it's going to help them develop as an overall football player. You know, Offensive guys will learn defensive fundamentals. Defensive guys will learn offensive fundamentals, will help them further their game in a lot of different ways. And there's different ways we're going to have fun to be able to motivate guys by you know giving some different things away, having fun in meetings, doing stuff like that to help kind of get them going and pushing through. We talked about this being your like, dream come true. Have you had moments like I say or when it hit you when you walk in the building and you put on the shirt or I don't know, like 
told your wife, like, wasn't a moment where you're like, dang, like, this is actually, like, for real. Yeah, no, there's no doubt. Yeah. It, it's been surreal. It's been a little bit of a whirlwind. But, yeah, no, every day I come in and I'm, I look at the horseshoe on my, on my shirt and I'm just like, this is unbelievable. You know, the opportunity to be able to work uh, for the Indianapolis Colts is it, certainly a dream opportunity and I'm looking forward to taking advantage of it. So when you got the call from Chris or from Shane, what was the reaction? Who did you call? What was your, what, what did you like? Yeah. Was it I was shot? with my wife. Yeah, so I was with my wife. We were actually um, on our way to Know, my wife's family's house in Columbus, Indiana, um, for my mother-in-law's 70th birthday. We were not expecting to get the cause. We were driving down to do that, but we're really excited. You know, obviously talking through some situations and details from there, and, and then talking with our family about it. And, but we're really excited with the opportunity that we, we just felt like we couldn't turn down. What do you remember about Alan Pierce when he got to you guys in Cincinnati, and what made him a pretty good special teams player? Yeah, Alec Pierce. You know, one of the things that's unique about him and. and can make a really good special teams player. He has experience playing offense and defense. So like when he came to the University of Cincinnati, he was an invaluable special teams guy because in high school he had the skill set and familiarity of playing both offense and defense. So he can fit a lot of different roles. He's really athletic, really fast, good straight line speed, had kind of the background of playing offense and defense and right away was kind of able to fit in and play special teams, did a really good job and really loved coaching him at Cincinnati. I like to say roster size is different from college the NFL. Anything else, just like special teams wise, you feel like you'll have to learn that's a different tweak from college game? Yeah, overall, you know, special teams is going to be about, you know, fundamental development. Um, all those fundamentals, the game of football as a whole, there's going to be a lot of carryover. There's certainly going to be some differences, you know, in the schematics of transitioning from college to the NFL. The biggest difference is going to be in punt schematic. Um, and obviously the structure of the punt game is slightly different uh, with the rules between college and the NFL. And that's certainly something that going full steam ahead and studying and, and getting prepared for. What's it like to see uh, Alex and his girl from afar you know, as he steps into the second year? It was awesome. Yeah, and I talked to him and congratulated him um, some even last year, and it's great to be able to catch back up with him. But, you know, being able to coach him at Cincinnati and now see all of his success here as a lot of the former players that I've coached have had success at the NFL, it's really, really great to see. That's Brian Mason. What a cool story. Grows up in Zionsville, becomes a special teams coordinator of the Colts, has kind of traveled. His wife is from Columbus. He's from right here in this area. This is kind of a homecoming. And that's cool. Hopefully, he's able to stay here a while and get this thing on its wheels and get it right so the Colts can win some games via special teams. Special teams important. The third leg on the football stool, if you will.